Hi, George here. And today I'll be showing you how to handle the problem when you have a seamless background that's just too small for what you need. You have too much showing on the right and on the left and at the top up here. So if you don't want to have those bars in there, you want to have just a nice seamless background. There are three basic ways to handle this kind of a situation and they're all fairly easy to do. We'll start off here. I'm just going to get rid of all these layers we don't need. Let's just delete all that stuff. There we go. And let's get this original picture. I got this over on Pexels. Let me bring that page up for you. Here we go again, it's on Pexels. Click on free download. I just want to hit and use the largest size here, the original size. If you just click on the button here, that's what you'll be getting. Or you can choose a different size if you want to, but I went for the real large size or the original size just to have as much detail as possible. Go ahead, save that onto your computer someplace and then open that up inside of Photoshop Elements. Okay, let's go back to the project. And here we are. I always like to make a duplicate of the background layer, right click and duplicate layer, choose okay. Hide the original. That's just a safety, just in case. We always have the original right here saved inside of the file. In case anything goes wrong, we just get back to that layer and we're all set to go. Now, the easiest way to solve stuff you don't want is obviously just to crop in. So go over here to the crop tool, right there in the modify section. I have mine set for no restriction. But you can go for a standard format if you want to like say a four by six ratio. Then I'll come in here someplace and just drag a marquee like that, drag the crop tool. And you can adjust the sizes on the corners here so everything is fitting inside. Okay, now I just seen that background. You can move this up and down if you want to, but I think right about here looks pretty good. Hit that check mark, and there we go. We simply cropped out that stuff, but we're in pretty tight. If you want to have more space in here, two ways to do that. I'll use the Control Z keyboard shortcut here to back out of that one. Okay, the second technique, I'm going to zoom out just a little bit. And for this, I'm using the wheel on my mouse. You've seen this before, but just in case you haven't, go up here to edit, come down to preferences and general. And inside checkbox right there is zoom with scroll wheel. Makes it real easy to zoom. And the reason why I'm zooming out is because I need to have some space out here on the sides. Okay, let's go over here, grab the rectangular marquee tool, come just outside the corner. If you're not seeing the tool, come into the corner first and you'll see it and then come outside. That should be fine. And let's pull a marquee in here, covering the whole image like that and pull it in just a little ways. See where it's too bright at the end? I'm going to come over here. It's just a little bit darker right there. So I have a little bit of that background showing. Now use the Control T keyboard shortcut to give us control handles. And then simply grab this right side and pull that out all the way until you stretch that part of that image out to that side and hit that check mark. Then Control D to deselect. Do the same thing on the left hand side. Again, to come just outside. Pull a marquee like this. Control T, give us those control handles, just pull the left side out. If it doesn't go far enough, we can zoom back out a little bit and pull it a bit further. There we go, and that check mark. Control D to deselect, and let's get that top. Same exact trick, just come in a little bit like this. Control T, and we pull that up until we're outside. And there we go, and then Control D to deselect. And that gives us more of that background. Now we have a problem in here where we're seeing kind of this lines in there, kind of a division, kind of a square thing happening. If you don't care about that, this is an easy way to do that. Okay, let's now do the best way. I'll use Control-0 to zoom in, and then Control-Z will back up a few steps here. And just back out of all that. There we go, Control-D to deselect. We're back to our original again. For this one, we're going to be separating out the figure onto its own layer and then recreating the background in behind that person, giving us complete control. So if you have a more modern version of Photoshop Elements, go up here and do Select and Subject. There we go. If you have an earlier version, then you can use any of your selection tools to go ahead and make this selection. Now I know a lot of my followers don't have some of these latest tricks, so let's just go ahead and we'll do it the hard way. Control D. Let's grab the standard lasso tool here. I'll just start right up here and just do a lasso just outside of the figure. And we'll go all the way around. There we go. And outside and then up this side here. And clear around like this. Up around the top. And back to our beginning point, just kind of overlap that. Here's your selection. Let's now bring this in. I'll use the refine edge. And let's bring our brush size up a lot. This is a very large image. I need a much larger brush size than I usually use. So about 134 looks pretty good. I'll leave all these alone. And I'm just going to brush in right up next to the figure here. Overlapping my brush just a little ways into the figure, but it's mostly outside. And we'll work our way around. 
and let Refined Edge do the figure for us. And there's one spot inside the arm here. I'll have to fix that one as a second pass on this. And if we have any problems, we'll fix those as well. I don't think we'll have anything. Maybe right in here might be a problem. We'll see when we get there. Okay, take this clear around. I like doing this in just little sharp movements, as you can see here. And then let Photoshop Elements go in and catch up with that. Okay, that worked out all right. We're fine there. Okay, that's good. Let's now take this out to a selection this time. Choose OK because I want to fix that bit right inside here. Okay, let's zoom in. And I need to remove that from the selection. So let's make a new selection right in here. And let's use the Magnetic Lasso tool in here. Let's set this for Subtract from Selection. And click and drag. And I'll let this tool find the edges for me. There we go right along the edge right here. Up around that hair. Back to the beginning. Let's now come back to the regular lasso tool. I can get the refined edge. Bring my brush size down on that. And let's just do a refined edge right along those hairs. And right in there, make it as nice as possible. That should be good. Okay, let's now output this to a new layer with the layer mask. Choose OK. And I'll zoom back out again. I'll just use the Control Zero to fit screen. And here's our new figure on its own layer. That's good. Okay, now above this layer here, the background copy, make a new layer right there. We're now going to make a gradient in this. So first go over here to your eyedropper tool and make sure your color picker is set at five by five and it's set for all layers. That'll make this real easy. And then go over here to the gradient tool and then gradients, choose the first one here. That's foreground to background or choose this one here, black to white. That's always a good choice. Click in the gradient sample box and here's the gradient. We want these bottom color stops, that one and this one. Go over here to the right side. This is your light color stop. Click on that one and where it says color, click in here. Brings up the color picker but instead go over your image and see here's an eyedropper tool. Try to find a nice light color, like maybe right in here. Notice how it's lighter next to her and darker outside. That's what we're gonna be going for. So I'll come in here just a little ways, maybe like right in here is a good spot. Click that and choose okay, that's the right side. Let's now go to the dark side here, click on this one. Click on the color swatch and let's find a dark value, maybe right up in here someplace or even up in here, looks pretty good. Maybe just a little bit darker than that. That's nice. So you see a nice gradient happening in here. Okay, choose OK. Now down here, click on this second option. This is the radial gradient because it's lighter behind her and darker towards the edges. And if we look at our gradient over here, it's going dark to light. Dark to the left, light on the right side. We want to have that reversed because it's going to be pulling from the left side to the right side. So it changes to reverse. We will now pull from the light to the dark and then come inside the figure somewhere, like right in here, kind of in the middle. And let's just click and drag, go out to a corner, let go. And there we go. It's lighter inside and darker outside. So here's a real nice, perfectly seamless background. Now, if you want to have some text in here, that's easy to do. Let's go down here to our text tool. Or really anything else you want to have in the background is fine. Make sure you're on that background layer. Let's click someplace in here. If you're in Photoshop Elements 2024, you'll get this sample text dropping in. If you're not, you'll just get the insertion point. I can show you that. I'll just select that and delete. Get the insertion point like that. Now mine's set at a pretty large size. Let's just set this to 72, so it's kind of small. And I'll type in backdrop, choose OK. Double click, and then come down where it says size and roll over the word where it says size. Click and drag to the right. You can make that as large as you want. Choose OK, and then place that in behind your figure. So there you go, three different ways to handle a backdrop to make it nice and clean and get rid of those things that are showing on the sides. Let's just take a fast look at that. I'll come down here to the background copy. I'll drag it at the top. There's the original, and here's our new cleaned up version. Now, if you want to have a written discussion of this, where I list these steps step by step, I have that over in my photo coach, and this one I'm calling Seamless Backdrop 2024. Just do a search for Seamless Backdrop 2024. Or look for that down in the project guides section. If you don't have my photo coach for Photoshop Elements, I'll put a link for that in the description. It's a great tool when you're working with any kind of video training because you can go there to get the answers for things that aren't listed in the training. If you want to help support this channel, allow me to make more of these videos here on YouTube. Consider sending me a thanks. That's that 
little button bottom right hand corner just below the video. If you enjoyed this video, don't forget to hit that like button. That really does help a lot. YouTube tracks those things. The more likes I get, the better visibility I have. And so you won't miss any videos in the future, make sure you're subscribed and you hit that notification bell icon. And I'll see you next time.